In this video, we're going to talk about wind shear. Wind shear is a change in wind speed and or direction. So it's either wind speed and or direction over a short distance. A wind shear can be a horizontal change in wind speed or a vertical change in wind speed. This means even if you have the same wind speed, but the direction is constantly changing at different altitudes or different pockets of air, this is considered wind shear. It also means that even if the wind direction is the same throughout any pocket of air or altitude, but the wind speed changes in each location, this is also wind shear. Wind shear can occur at any altitude, even close to the surface, where the difference between wind at the surface and wind at 3,000 or 5,000 feet is due to friction of the air moving over the surface of the earth. Some common causes of wind shear at low levels are frontal activity, thunderstorms, temperature inversions, clear air turbulence, and surface obstructions. Wind shear is found all around and directly below a thunderstorm. For example, in the mature stage of a thunderstorm, you get wind shear created from the strong updrafts near the middle of the thunderstorm and downdrafts around it. Then in the dissipating stage, the energy of the thunderstorm scatters in all directions, causing wind shear throughout the thunderstorm and vicinity. As mentioned, wind shear is not just found near thunderstorms. Wind shear can also commonly be found in frontal zones. In frontal zones, the wind speed and direction changes across the front. However, when you have a warm front approaching, the most critical frontal activity occurs ahead of the front. So if you are at an airport, as a warm front approaches, you can expect changing weather and wind shear prior to the front even arriving. This occurs because in a warm front, the cold and more dense air wants to hang out at the surface while the warm air wraps above it. So when you're at the surface, you can still be technically in a cold air mass, but experiencing conditions of wind shear, precipitation, and even temperature inversions caused by the approaching warm front, as you can see here. And wind shear is also commonly felt when ascending through a temperature inversion. Due to the mixing of warm and cold air, as we see here in that sort of cold to warm layer that you get in a temperature inversion. A sudden change of indicated airspeed is a sign that you are experiencing wind shear. This is because the airspeed indicator calculates airspeed using static and pitot pressure, which are affected by the sudden change in wind direction and speed. A pilot can expect wind shear in a temperature inversion whenever the wind speed at 2,000 to 4,000 feet above the surface is at least 25 knots. Wind shear during their approach to land in IFR or VFR can be very dangerous to pilots. It is so important that a pilot maintain a stable approach at a constant approach speed on the airspeed indicator. This way, when your airspeed indicator changes quickly, you can confidently suspect wind shear. As pilots, we always try to land in a headwind, but if you have a wind shear upon approach and the direction or speed changes quickly away from a headwind, you will see this as a decrease on your indicated airspeed because less air with the lack of headwind is entering the pitot probe. Consider the example of a approach into a nice steady headwind. But as you get lower on the approach, the wind quickly changes to a tailwind due to wind shear. Not only will you notice this as a change in your indicated airspeed, but you will also feel it in your descent. With less headwind and airspeed, your lift decreases causing you to descend at a quicker rate and greater angle of descent. You'll need to adjust power and thus pitch as quickly as possible to put yourself back on the glide slope and approach speed for a nice landing. The opposite situation can also occur, so let's visualize that now. ATC may direct you to land on a runway because the surface winds are showing a headwind, however winds above the surface could be sheared in a different direction or speed. Consider the example where a pilot is approaching a runway to land initially with a tailwind before it then switches to a headwind at a lower altitude on the approach. Here, the indicated airspeed would rise with the change to a headwind. This would create more lift and cause the nose to rise in your aircraft to go above glide slope. You would then need to reduce power and then adjust pitch accordingly to get back onto the glide slope and your approach speed.